you know that. And thank you, Neil. So let us let us have our peace practice. And today, um, <laughs> Jesse is a sweet play partner. Uh, sometimes you have prayer partners and sometimes you have play partners. So um, Jesse, I knew she would not even blink an eye. I've asked her to offer a little something after this peace practice. So we'll see what spirit has in order by right of Jesse this morning. And if you will, just close your eyes. Get fully present. Accept and allow the peace that comes over you. We are seeking peace, not out of the quietude surrounding us, but the internal quietude. To the best of your ability, just be very still with your body right now. And bring your attention from your head to your heart. Imagine yourself breathing in and out of that space. And then if you will, please bring somebody into this space right now with you. Through your imagination, bring in your family, possibly some neighbors, and most definitely people who irk you. Bring those people into this vast, beautiful, deep peace. In that place, we don't have to have opinions or judgments. We just live from right of acceptance. And so please repeat after me for our peace practice. I am the peace that I wish to see. I know this peace for my family. I know this peace for my community. My community knows this peace for the world. Namaste.
as me. Oh, Jesse. Let's give her real, let's give her real acknowledgement. Oh my God. Jesse created that about 15 minutes ago. I asked her if she could do something, and that's what she did. So she, what she did was genius. And that's what happens when we align with truth and allow for inspiration to find us. That's what happens. We don't have to go get it. We don't have to force it. We don't have to drive it. When we understand and stay in spiritual practice, the feeling is allowance. Jesse, that was so stunning. I, oh. Very contrary to the statement I'm about to use, mostly because I was amused by finding this on Facebook. Um, now, of course, you know what people do. People take quotes and they put it on top of famous actors and the actors often have never said what was quoted, but so be it. This one was with the face of um, Morgan Freeman. Uh, maybe he said it, although I actually looked it up. I don't think he did. Nope, it is knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believing the lies. Stupid is knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believing the lies. And I see a lot of that. And I see a lot of that, especially when we don't question what we think of authority. Okay, that's, that is something um, that you know that I've been driving for a long time is question everything, question everything, question everything. Why? Because unless you feel safe to question what it is you believe, what you believe is probably something you adopted and it might or might not hold up under, under scrutiny. So Oscar Wilde said, the truth is rarely pure and never simple. Truth is rarely pure and never simple. That I agree with. Truth <laughs> is objective. It is at the mercy of opinions. And so we're gonna kind of um, dissect truth a little bit here today. There are some easily proven truths that I think you'll agree with. We are born, we live, we breathe, we die. Fire burns, we require water and sustenance to survive. Gravity, it's pretty much, unless you're a particular type of yogi, I haven't seen it in person, but I'm aware that there are some people that have challenged gravity and have been successful. So I'll give them that. If children are not given love and touch at birth, their growth is thwarted and they will grow un unwell in a very bad mental state. If we plant a tomato seed, we will not get a cucumber. So those, I'm sure there are others. But these things I know hold up no matter who says it, where it is, what culture, what country. These are truths that I, that I can trust. If we believe that individuals can heal through prayer, and some, prayer, some heal and some don't, is that a fact? Is, is that possibility of a fact or a fluke? You get that? If we pray for healing, we pray to raise up 
and it works, is it a fact or is it a fluke? How do we know? Now in science of mind, we say that it is our alignment, our um, acceptance of truth that makes it so. But are, are there variables to pay attention to? So for many, many years, there was a study of genetics and, um, and we believed in a certain way that DNA and genetics caused us to be how we are, right? Every, that was pretty much a science. We weren't questioning it. But now there's something called epigenetics. I think I mentioned this last week. And epigenetics is something now that's on top of the study of genetics. And epigenetics has a whole different concept, a whole different way, and a way of looking at what happens with our DNA and with our genetics. We are not, now, oddly enough, we've been saying this for a long time in a different way. I've been saying to you for years that you are not at the mercy, mercy of what was. Well, the, epi, the study of epigenetics says that that's true. You have the ability with some understanding how to actually turn on and off the, the genes. Now, this was not always known. It was not always believed, but they are, they are proving this to be so now. I mean, the science behind it, I've tried. I've tried to pay attention to the science behind it and I can barely grasp the language. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do that to you here. But I do know. The other thing is, I haven't needed the science to believe what I believe. I haven't needed the science to trust in healing and wholeness. I haven't needed that. But the, the fact is that now they are, they are coming up with that. Now they're coming up with the science for that, which is great because all of you scientific technological nerds out there, now you can feast. You can feast on a variety of books and studies and they're vast, they're vast. So truth, according to the God Google, <laughs> and there are many, many definitions, is that which is true or in accordance with fact or reality. Now listen to the second definition that they give. This is fascinating to me. A fact or belief that is accepted as true. If it's a belief, how can it be a fact? Since you and I know that our beliefs are malleable and our beliefs are at the mercy of our mood. Our beliefs are not something that is so rock solid to, to build something upon. They're something for you and I to grow upon and we can use them as stepping stones to a greater, hmm, a greater experience, human experience. But my truth and your truth are not the same truth. So I was fascinated that Google would associate the word belief with the idea of truth. It doesn't make sense to me. Another one, truth is the property of being in accord with fact or reality. In everyday language, truth is typically ascribed to things that aim to represent reality or otherwise correspond to it, such as beliefs, propositions, propositions, and declarative sentences. Truth okay. is usually- Okay, see you later. Truth with a large T is different from truth with a small T. Oh no, wait, I got, I got distracted. Truth is usually held to be the opposite of falsehood. That was the end of that. I'm saying that there's truth with a capital T and there's truth with a small T. But even as I begin to dissect this with you, I cannot even hold to that idea exclusively. The, the study of genetics and now epigen epigenetics is proof of that. There are many things that science told us was so that is now not so. 
even we can take um, a variety of things. The um, when back was it in the oh my God the eighties when was it the eighties when the AIDS crisis came to came to reality? I mean, people were dying left and right. That was a truth according to the way the science presented it. Now we know that that's not a truth. Cancer was always a death sentence. Cancer is no longer a death sentence. So science in its looking has got to let go of its hold of what it says is reality. Are you following me here? So truth truly is subjective. It is subjective, except for some of those things that hold up under complete scrutiny. We breathe, we die. I would even say we pay taxes, but since we know that rich people don't always have to do that, I can't even say that anymore, okay? That used to be the joke, right? We, we live, we breathe, we pay taxes, okay? So if you and I are engaged in a discussion, a disagreement, and you imagine yourself a triangle, there's gonna be your truth, my truth, and then there's gonna be a higher truth. Now that higher truth might be something that we can only see when we let go of our opinions and are willing to see it from a higher viewpoint. But once again, we must be willing to question what we think our reality is. Okay, does your conviction make something so? No, no, it doesn't. Does your agreement make something so? Nope, it does not. If something is true, it will be true despite what you necessarily think or believe. And it will run true throughout our lives together. In the Science of Mind textbook, oddly enough, the definition that they give in the glossary, I'm not gonna read it because it was long, in the glossary under truth is what I would have put under the word principle. So I'm even fascinated by that fact. And I, I want to tell you, I really, really encourage you, I really encourage you to get your eyes in the textbook post-Sunday celebration. If we say something that's questionable, do not take my word for it, or Joel's, or Tony's, or Neil's. Do not take our word for it. Do the work so you can go in and pick it apart and dissect it. And there maybe you'll come to a truth that elevates you, okay? However, don't just believe. So there was, there were definitely some truths in history that people thought were so. And there were acts, heinous acts perpetrated because people believed them to be so. Their lies presented that supported the Holocaust. Was it true that, that the Jews were this inferior culture of people? No, but it was presented and because people didn't question it, it was believed and supported and acted upon. Believing that women were witches and should be burned at the stake. When I think about that, when I think about <laughs> that, and then mostly the men, were so threatened by these women that they had to put them to death. And they put them to death in this very public and horrific way. But they thought that that was true. Believing that the Native Americans didn't deserve to be respected as we annihilated these tribes. We came in and we annihilated the people who were here based on some concept and some sense of privilege. Do you get that? 
We must question everything. Believing that we could sail across the seas, take millions of people from their homes and use them to increase our profits. Use them to increase our profits. You and I must question everything. I don't care if it's put out by president, by the president of the United States, by the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, by the CDC, by Reverend Dr. Edward Villune, who is the, who is the um, spiritual leader currently of a Centers for Spiritual Living, or by me. We, to, to not question is to be party to the lies. I want you to catch that. To not question is to be party to the lies and to give them power. In the textbook, it says that the, the truth points to freedom under law. And I wanna talk about that in a minute. And it also says it has been written, that's on page 25.3, Paragraph three, if you want that. It has been written that the truth shall make us free, provided we know the truth and we note that the evolution of man's consciousness brings with it the acquisition of new powers and higher possibilities. Now that I believe with all my heart and all my being, that's page 32.3. I have seen now for years that on my personal experience, but I've seen this with others. As I work to increase my consciousness, there comes a confidence of knowledge that I did not necessarily acquire in traditional ways. I'm gonna say that again. As I increase my consciousness and grow my awareness, I suddenly find myself accessing understanding and knowledge that I did not acquire through normal, through the normal way of a class, a learning, a book. Now I also do that, but the increase of consciousness when you are dedicated and you are in practice and God, I guess you guys might be tired of hearing us say that, but I, I, I know that the ministers here, personal practices, personal practices, because it's the practices that expand and widen your awareness and your ability to, to find out who you are in the midst of something. So is God required for what we do? I'd love your answers in the chat. Is God required for what we do? Now I ask you that because as the ministerial team begins to reorganize itself and come together, but is the world, okay, so Tony says everything is God. So is the world, let me say it dif differently then. Does it, do we have to relate to it as God? Does God have to be, okay. Um, yes, it is tricky, isn't it? It is. Because if you don't believe in God, you get to believe in good. If you don't believe in God as this, as this all, as this all of everything, does that leave you out of using the laws of creation and co-creation? Yes, the, pre the presence is, I wanna go back to that one. Okay. The presence does not matter what we believe or call it, truth. The word God, no, the truth of God, however you call it, yes. Okay, so I'm loving this. I'm loving this because we can see, you're not running away from me questioning this. <laughs> and I love that you and I can be in a powerful exchange where I can say to you, is God required? And you don't hang up on me. 
because the truth is we are more than that. And I, I believe that our teaching needs to be able to withstand, it needs to be able to withstand this scrutiny. It needs to be able to withstand this scrutiny. Does everybody get that? It's very important. For you and I to know truth, we have to also question our alignment with something, our attachment to it. God is not requirement. Requirement is ah, my, um, uh, God is not requirement. Requirement is a, an acceptance or a practice of, of lack. God, requirement, ah, is a, a oh, I got acceptance or a, a practice of lack. I'd have to ponder that one a little bit, Richard, but I'm, I'm listening to you. Um, a community that can question things together is a powerful community. Because I guarantee you, there are places you would go that this would not be the conversation. That's a fact. And here's, the, here's a value that has nothing to do with the concept of truth in and of itself that you and I, let us be a community of people can, that can disagree and still be in community. What a beautiful thing that is, that you and I can disagree and still have a potent and powerful community. Thank you, God, for that. <laughs> now, the funny thing is, I wasn't good with God for a very long time. I wasn't, it wasn't the word that I used. And I remember as a young girl, my spiritual teacher, um, you know, she was teaching all the time at the workshops and stuff. And all of a sudden, one day I realized that she was talking about God and I hadn't caught it. And I, we used to sit on the floor <laughs> in our younger days and I stood up and I said, oh my God, you're talking about God. And she looked at me with this big smile. And she said, yes, I went, oh. Now it still didn't live inside of me in a comfortable place for decades. It wasn't immediately assumed. And that was for a very personal reason. I had gone to a Sunday celebration at some Lutheran church and it was during the Vietnam War and my brother was missing. And the minister said something like, uh, if, uh, something about those who went AWOL, that they should be punished or something. Oh, and God would not forgive them. That was the point. And I remember thinking to myself, if God doesn't forgive my brother, that's not a God I want. If God would not forgive my brother, that's not a God that I want. And it wasn't until 19 years ago, we were at our first location as the Center for Spiritual Living and I healed where God lives inside of me or that presence or that experience or whatever you want to call it. And I remember announcing to the, to the Sunday, uh, um, those who were there on Sunday, I told them I had decided to get off the fence and I was now good with God. So now I started using that word interchangeably with everything else. But what I don't want is I don't want my spoken word to have someone not feel welcome or seen. And I would hope that that's true for you too. We, we, we are always very proud of us as a teaching that we don't go out you know, knocking on doors. And yet when we talk to people, it's important that we find language that has them feel safe around us. Individuals must feel safe because when they feel safe, they'll let go of the pain of their, of their existence and be willing to walk down a different road. So here are three questions I offer you that you can use for your contemplation. Does what I believe to be true stand the test of being questioned? Or maybe I should say can. Can what I believe to be true stand the test of being questioned? Okay, number two. Am I attached to my truth? To, uh, am I attached to my truth out of my need to know something 
or because I am empowered by it. If what you claim is your truth, it should empower you. Every, there's always the conversations amongst ministers now about you know bringing young people into the community. I got news for you. What, what I'm very clear about is youngins do not want stories about some God in the sky. They just want to know how are you living your life. They want to know how are you proving things out. And that's for each one of us. How are you proving the principles? How are you treating yourself? How are you treating your family members? How are you treating your neighbors? Watch your behavior and you'll know what you believe. Third question, third, I did two. Did you see that? <laughs> Do I need agreement to believe what I believe is true? Do I need agreement? Right. I'm seeing some head shake now. So here's what I want to leave you with. There is a vibration in the energy in the, in the, in the universe that we live in that's measurable. It's measurable. They have now found ways to measure it, to detect it and to measure it. There is a vibration that when you and I get quiet, we move into alignment with this vibration. And that vibration is one which lifts us, guides us, empowers us, and allows us to access wisdom that we didn't have before. But it takes the quieting of the busyness that surrounds us and to come into full focus between head and heart. And when we get there, suddenly you'll be able to access things that you have never accessed before. I don't care what you call it, you'll feel it. It has a feeling. Learn to identify the feeling of it. And I wanna to say to you that coming this Wednesday, if you've read the newsletter, you know it's in there on Wednesday mornings, gonna try this for a period of time at seven o'clock in the morning. So it's probably not for <laughs> Dawn Lee, um, but it's set or, or Sandy that's here with us. Um, at seven o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna open a Zoom room for a half hour to be, the, to be present for you in prayer. And you can call that whatever you want, but I'm banking on this vibration to make this work. So join me Wednesday mornings at seven o'clock for prayer should you should you want to be prayed up? Let us bring this into consciousness right now. So let's turn away from the busyness of our minds, from the chatter of opinion, and move into that place where the power, the presence, the love huh, owns us. Oh, dear, dear sweet peace let us surrender into that place heart and mind accepting and allowing the potency of possibility to be our reality i know for each one of us that there is a power here it's ha it's present by means of you by means of you never separate never outside just in that beautiful, beautiful dance with the divine. Let us know this to be true. I'm so grateful. And I surrender this word to love and to law. And so it is. Namaste all, love you. Come see us on, our, or I know Neil's gonna tell you, August 11th, come and bring somebody with you. Come in person, please, and bring somebody with you. He'll explain more. Love you all. Well, Rev, that was beautiful once again. Your talks are always so profound and full of truth. So this is about getting in that vibe. Sometimes it feels like my heart
stuck in a revolving door It can't get me down so much I don't even want to mess with it anymore Or that too familiar feeling Oh, I know it will But I don't let it get too far No, no, I'm too good at staying cool now Yes, I am learning the art And I'm getting good at letting go, yeah I'm getting good at giving it over Cause I know it ain't in my hands So I'm getting good at letting go, yeah Getting good at giving it over Cause I know, though I do not understand My soul is always got something better planned When the shadow comes creeping in Like a thief from my past Well, I turn on the light By remembering only my soul knows my path And I'm getting good at letting go, yeah Getting good at giving it over Cause I know it ain't in my head you jesse <clears throat> fantastic uh i'm i'm guessing you probably didn't write that one in the last 10 minutes uh you know probably not but that's wonderful thank you and uh, uh and uh thank you for your talk today reverend michelle wonderful talk so that leads us to um which i have just put into the chat our conscious giving affirmation and as we will uh, go over in a minute, uh, you know, our consciousness uh, expansion and raising around finding a new place for the center, a new direction for the center is coming up. And it's been, this is the third of the three meetings. And trust me, all of your giving in every single way is really going to help grow this center. And it's going to help uh, expand the reach of this teaching, which we know is fantastic. Neil, can I just say there's some fate that, well, I'm not seeing their faces, but there are some people in here that I have not seen in a long time. And I just want to, I'm not even going to call you out. I just want to welcome you. I'm glad you have been back into this community with us. Really, it is very good to see some names that I haven't seen in a minute. So thank you and welcome. I hope you feel loved. Thank you, Neil. Certainly. And of course, you know, this is our, this is where we express our gratitude through the giving that we do in all the different ways. So if you read along with me, the conscious gifting affirmation, which I have put into the chat, I bless this gift that I give today. I give this gift from my heart 
and I give it mindfully. May my gift go further to heal, prosper, and bless this center and all who enter. I accept all good that comes as a result of this flow, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly, and so it is. So um, <clears throat> I got to tell you this. I've been many communities where people say, you know, I don't want to hang around for the announcements. They're boring. I don't want to go through them. But there is so much good happening at this center. There's so much exciting stuff. There's so much available at this center. And I got to tell you, the best way to stay in touch is go to the website. There's so much new information on the website, cslnj.org. The Remembering You comes out on Tuesdays. Uh, take a look. Your birthday might be in there this month. We do list the birthday. So happy birthday to you if you were born in August. And um, then there's also the newsletter that comes out either late Thursday or early Friday morning that has the links to the talks and all of the information on classes and everything else. So there's just, there's so many resources here and there's so many great things that are happening like Michelle just mentioned. And that one thing that is new for sure, uh, which I will give you the link for, is the Pray Me Up Rev, which is the uh, seven o'clock on, on Wednesdays. Um, that um, it, That is something new. So uh, I can't think of a better way to start Wednesday mornings than with that, uh, you know, or any day, of course, but midweek, it's, it's a beautiful boost for that as well. Keep in mind, and please, it's in the newsletters, register for our 20th anniversary party. We're going to be doing that. I see Mr. Cappiello is here, and he's going to be handling a lot of the food through Dominic's. Um, and so that is just um, going to be a creative experience, inviting you based on our theme, Where Love Resides, um, the to um, create poems and songs or paintings or whatever creative project you want to do. September 17th, register now so we know how many do we anticipate. Um, that's going to be just a, an incredible celebration of us, of all of us. Um, you get to all look at each other and say, thank you for being here. This has been fantastic for 20 years. One other thing I do want to mention quickly, and that is those of you who have been participating in the transitioning of spirit conversation, it's been great. It's getting better. Have no idea how long it's going to go. But this month, August 11th, would have been the date for that. But we have moved it to August 18th. So transitioning of spirit, if you're joining in that conversation, the links are available where I just mentioned. And the um, uh, I see, Regina, I see that I will. Uh, I'm surprised I didn't put that in there, but I'll 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 find it. Um, the um, uh, the reason we moved it is because August 11th, which Michelle mentioned earlier, this is our gathering at the United Methodist Church in Caldwell, Eight Academy Road. It's also available online. It is the opportunity for us to expand our consciousness and expand what we are doing. Um, in terms of our center and how we are um, going to create the future for our center. So um, please, uh, if, if you can make that either online or um, in person, you know, we've had a lot of people there in person and the energy, the experience has just been so inspiring and so loving and so wonderful. Um, so uh, on that note, I think we've we've covered everything we need to do. So uh, we're going to, you know, Jesse is available to do another song. So let's engage her. Let's say, you know, let's enjoy this. Thank you all for being here today. Thanks, Neil. And uh, thank you guys for having me. The song's called Beat of Your Drum. You can probably guess what it's about. Home and you don't know what to do. It was your last day working there. You've been waiting on this moment for years, and now it's finally here. The last time that the world was so open was when you were 21. Mm -hmm. Now you're watching the chapter close. You see the infinite possibilities of the next one. It can be so relieving. Moments like this. your messy apartment and think, hmm, maybe I should clean. No. Then instead you go back to bed, because now you've got
got time for everything. Mm -hmm. So go on and take your liberty. Go on and travel the world. Go on and take your liberty. You set your soul loose on the open road. Wake up early just to catch the sunrise. Or be reminded of the purpose of being alive. Feel that sweet sense of freedom. Start marching to the beat of your drum. Tick tock goes the desperate clock, hoping it still has your life by the balls. But you're emancipated from the system in which your days are dictated by the hands on the wall. Huh. You scoot and shuffle past the bathroom mirror, you notice the chains are missing from your legs. Your uniform and your enslavement's been traded for dancing naked while making bacon and eggs. Betty Gay used to receive it. The days of the gift. Betty Gay busy believing. What kind of place to go on and take your liberty? Go on and travel the world. Go on and take your liberty. Set your soul loose on the open road. Wake up early just to catch the sunrise. Or to be reminded of the purpose of being alive. Feel that sweet sense of free. the people you miss and for a moment you think you'd go back if you could ah uh, then you remember that you spent the day chasing rays walking barefoot in the woods so go on and take your liberty go on and travel the world go on and take your liberty set your souls on the open road No, thank you. That was beautiful, as usual. Thank you, Jesse Powers, for um, everything today. You know, uh, you, 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 you even went through the creative process right while you were here and wrote a new song. So uh, that's fantastic. Um, thank you, Dawn Lee, for everything you did today. Thank you, Reverend Michelle, for your wonderful talk today. Thank you all for being here. Go out and enjoy this fantastic day. It's good to be alive. It's good to be a religious scientist. Love you all. Bye-bye. Oh, you could open up and say hello. I'm sorry. I forgot that part. Unmute. Say hello. Kiss each other. I was wondering. I know. Hi, I've been everyone. Good so much Good day, everybody. Hi, 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 everybody. Hey, hey, Jared, Tony. Hello, Tony. Hello, Hello, babe. Where are you? Hello, Mr. Ayad and Desiree. Oh, B. Hey, Richard. Good day. Hey, Des, my love. How are you guys? Hey, Richie. We're like a Hi, Regina. Hi, Donnie. Hey, come on. Hi, Jared. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Bye. Bye. I love you. Have a great week. Ah, all right. What a beautiful day. What a uh, just so, you know, Jesse's music is so upbeat and so, you know, so lively. It's, you know, and and you know what? I learned from Michelle that that's the truth. So <laughs> oh, and speaking of truth, Antonia, 
How are you? Frank, we want to know how you are, but you're generally good. Uh, you know, Antonia, are you recovering? I'm recovering. The healing's slow, but it's happening. So I'm just okay. saying, slow and easy. Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened, so, Antonio? I broke my shoulder and my arm through a bad fall. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Sorry. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Not so your right hand hasn't um, been very useful, your right arm. Have you have you learned to use like a left jab with Frank? I mean, is that uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Frank, she, she uses it to point to what she wants and from what ah, she wants. there you go. Yeah. And and yeah. you know, you are such a good, loving, kind husband that I'm sure this doesn't, you know, it this hasn't extended your patience, uh, you know, or shortened your patience, I should say, at all. So mm -hmm. He's yeah. been wonderful. He really has. We are, you know, it, does open up, it opens up curiosity and questioning and like uh, what we what is the lesson or what are we to uh, learn from this experience and knowing yeah. that we're always protected and taken care of. So, uh, you know, it gives you, it gives you pause to contemplate. So uh, that's good. Yeah. Well, and you can also be grateful it wasn't her legs, otherwise you'd be carrying her around. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's true. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> all right. So but thank you all for your prayers. They really made a difference. Really. So we are so grateful to have the center to have access to such healing power. So we are very grateful. Well, and I know it was the, the minute we all found out that that's exactly what happened. So, yeah. Beautiful. Well, it's good to see a smile on both your faces. Yes, it's really. I, I don't mean you, Frank, not both your faces, Frank. I mean, you know, you and her. So I'll just get out of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in, enjoy and relax and recover and heal. And, uh, you know, we'll Thanks. see everybody next Sunday. Thank you, Neil. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, Kamos. Bye. bye, Regina. Bye, Judy. Bye, bye, everyone. Goodbye, my kitchen.